So next up, folks, we are moving into the weird and wonderful world of technical analysis. Some people call it astrology for men. <laughs> but for those of you who are new to charting and interpreting charts, you probably want to start out by learning a couple of key indicators to get you going at least. So this would be an excellent place to start because our next speaker is a veteran stockbroker. He has been with CGS CIMB for 29 years as a remesier, and he's created a proprietary system he calls super stocks that he's used profitably through both bull and bear cycles. I'll also be jumping in through the session to convey your questions to him, so please do submit your questions through the Q&A box on the right. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Ho Sing Fu. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much uh, have, for having me for this uh, XGX Trading uh, Festival. Uh, thank you, Edward, for the kind introduction. Right, so without further ado, I'd like to share screen on my slides. Okay, let's do it. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So uh, as Edward says, uh, I've been a reminder with uh, CIMB Securities for the past, since 1993. Okay, today my topic of the presentation is called Trip with an Edge Using Relative Strength and Price Volume Analysis. Okay, just a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Uh, today's uh, talk uh, is uh, conducted by me uh, uh, and uh, in no way my company is uh, and I uh, actually um, uh, suggesting you buy any of these uh, three ideas that I presented. All right, so uh, do consult your uh, financial advisor if you do have intention to um, uh, trade on your own. Okay, right. So I've been reminded of CIMB Securities uh, for the past 29 years. I first joined the company GK Gold Stock Brokers. Later on, the, uh, uh, CIMB bought over GK and uh, and. Uh, on uh, recent years, CGS took a stick in CIMB Securities. So the company's name is called CGS CIMB Securities. Um, for the past few years, I've been a very strong advocate for financial and uh, investment literacy, right? So I do believe that uh, with your passion, uh, with a bit of uh, hard work and with a bit of uh, um, curious curiosity, right? Uh, one can learn how to master the markets. Uh, be whether you are more a, a fundamental guy or a technical guy like me, right? So I'm more like a fundamental plus technical analysis uh, uh, when I use my, the tools that I use for my uh, trading as my well investment, right? So uh, I also have been sharing my investment philosophy through many courses. Uh, some of these are conducted jointly with partners like shareinvestor.com. Uh, I've also spoken with uh, forums organized by MoneySense, uh, SIAS, uh, Online Traders Club, and Investing Note, right? All right, this is, today, uh, this is the agenda for this presentation that we short, uh, I did a short introduction. Uh, the main focus for this presentation is about price volume behavior, all right? And we're going to learn how to use price volume to detect uh, patterns of accumulation or patterns of distribution and uh, spotting price strength and breakouts during the um, uh, price movement. Uh, and also, I want to touch on this very important point, which I use a lot, which is actually relative strength. I will explain later what it means. And finally, we were going to use uh, my company's platform, CGSMB Proprietary iTrade Pro, to analyze some of these um, uh, ideas and uh, that's uh, presently in the market. And then maybe we can discuss some stock trading ideas that you have in the Q&A. Okay. Right. Um, what is price volume? All right. So basically, every share that trade in the market will print a price as well as a volume. Right, so ultimately the price and volume data are fed into are the raw data used to derive many of these technical analysis tools. So, so both one are familiar with, uh, say for example, on balance volume, right, uh, MACD, moving averages, all these are derivative of the price and volume data, right? So if you know how to interpret the price and volume data, you definitely have to edge over uh, many of the participants who are just interpreting the delayed uh, indicators. Right, so when we talk about volume, we talk about the traded volume of a share. Right, so for example, we're not talking about buy and sell, uh, the market depth, right? Uh, how many buyers, how many sellers, we're talking about the traded volume. So if one a, a buyer bought 10,000 shares from a seller, then the printed volume would be 10,000, and that would be the traded volume of the share, okay? Ultimately, the volume is the fuel to a uh, price uh, movement, right? Uh, for example, you have a missile, you have a rocket, you need 
uh, even somebody press the button to start the rocket to, to, to launch a rocket without fuel, right? The rocket couldn't fly. Right. Similarly, for a price to move, right, you need volume. And need and, and the volume measures the enthusiasm of the buyers and sellers, right? So um, by volume create liquidity as as more uh, as there are more and more liquidity, it draws even more buyers and sellers to trade the share. So definitely uh, the ultimate uh, thing to take away is that a sustainable price trend needs strong volume, uh, strong rising volume. Okay, this is one example of a price chart for those who are not very familiar. All right, uh, let me pull up my laser pointer. Okay, so this is a price chart and I plotted a candlestick chart. All right, so just a little bit of orientation. If you see a green candle like that with a white body, it basically means that on that day, the price has moved up, okay? Now on this day, particular days where the volume, the, the candle is red color, it means the price has came down. All right, so it's very deep, easy to tell. But you look at the volume, if you plot the volume and some of these charting platform and tools that you use, right, they, talk, they plot the volume in one single color, like a green color. Okay, the volume are actually all these um, you know, bars that you see at the uh, bottom of the screen. Okay, now from this kind of comparison, it's very difficult to compare which are the days that the volume actually print, uh, uh, are printed on a down day and which are printed on an uh, up day. Right, so it's not very useful in analyzing price action if you ask me, if you, uh, if you know what I mean, all right? So what we wanna do is that we want to be able to tell, okay? We want to be able to tell whether a price has gone up or gone down for the particular day. So how do we do that? Okay, you can actually plot the uh, volume using a uh, different method, all right? So you have an alternate color of the volume on the, those days where the uh, price has gone up. Okay, so let's say for example, um, Okay, here, this particular bar, right? This green color bar, can, can the bar means the price has gone up on a day, right? So if you change the volume to also green color, it will tell you at one visual glance, visual, visual, uh, by visualizing it, right? Eyeballing the chart, you can tell that, oh, these are the days that uh, uh, the share has gone up and the volume has printed so much. And you can compare against the uh, adjacent bars to see how strong the volume has been, all right? So similarly, on days when it's got the, the, bar, the, the bar is down, red color, Right, on those days where the price came down, you also can tell that by the look of the volume, how much printed, how much volume was printed. Okay, so if you see that, okay, this uh, red color bar is almost uh, as tall, uh, in fact, taller than many of the recent adjacent bar, you know that this day is actually suffering from very strong selling volume. So this is why it's very necessary to print your alternate colors of the, of the bar and it will give you a better, um, better note, look and feel of how the price has uh, uh, conducted itself. Okay, so we're going to move on. So now some, uh, I like to run through some basic uh, principles of how you interpret the volume, right? And then on the later on, we'll use the uh, price chart to discuss uh, some of the ideas that we see in the market now. Now, normally price, the volume will go with the trend. Okay, what do you mean by that? So you, so you see the price has been rising on uh, making higher, higher, and higher low. All right, so for healthy price trend, for healthy price uptrend, right, we want the volume to also commensurately uh, be rising. Say for example, right, the bond is printed so much, then it retrace, right, up again, and it's showing higher high and higher, higher lows kind of peak, S same pattern as the price chart. So this is actually a, uh, a uh, indication that the, the, um, the price is on a healthy uptrend. All right, so the trader volume rep represents the money flow between the buyers and the sellers. So value, uh, the, the, the value purchase, okay, against the value sold. Now, if the buyers are greedy, right? So let's say, for example, you're a buyer and seller uh, on both sides on the market debt, all right? So if they don't want to budge, you will, you know, the price will just be stagnant. But if, you have, if, you have a, uh, if the buyers are more eager to buy up the market, right, you'll take from the seller and then you have a printed, printed volume, right? So more uh, buyers are more eager, more and more eager buyers are getting in the market. You see the price trend moving uh, up substantially and you need volume to create this kind of price movement in a strong uptrend. So that will create a momentum, right? So this is a, a, a basis and a fact of a human psychology, right? The rising prices, the principle is that rising prices and volume are normal. Next, um, when, the, when you have rising prices, okay, similarly here, 
Okay, but however, you can if you see that the volume are making lower and lower peaks. Okay, right. It shows you that this, although the price might be rising, but the momentum may be slowing down, and that could be a warning sign that the trend might be coming to an end, or there might some be some uh, precaution you need to take, like tighten the stops and um, uh, taking partial profit and stuff like that. Okay, so this is how um, uh, how you manage your risks when you trade. Okay, next, uh, at times, you might see that the volume rise, okay? So for example, you have a price and volume rising slowly, okay? And then suddenly you have a very sharp, uh, almost like a parabolic uh, kind of uh, increase in really in the share price, right? So in this case, right? So basically the market is going for a very uh, parabolic move. Uh, it's like a blow off, all right? So recently we actually have seen many of this uh, happening uh, over the past uh, like uh, six months or so, where the, a lot of tech stocks, right? In fact, uh, maybe uh, uh, earlier than that, uh, last year, there were a lot of tech stocks uh, going for parabolic move, uh, stocks like Tesla, locally with IFAS, uh, even some of the stocks like um, Top Glove, uh, MedTech in the Glove sector during the pandemic in 2020, they may actually make a new, uh, uh, slowly, it was riding slowly, and suddenly they went for like a, like almost a double in the share price in a very short period of time with very sharp rising volume. So this is what we call a blow off, right? After a blow off, right? It doesn't, uh, it don't need a little, you don't need a lot of volume for the price to come off. So you might see a pattern whereby the price goes up on very uh, sharp, uh, sharp rally and then the volume pick up substantially. And finally, when the price come down and make uh, making lower, lower and lower highs, right? You'll notice that the price start to, the, the volume start to shrink. All right, so this one um, uh, pattern in a blow off. All right, because conversely, on the reverse side, say for example, uh, selling climax, and we see this uh, very, very recently, uh, two weeks ago. All right, say uh, during the uh, uh, sell off during the Ukraine and Russian uh, in uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, there was a lot of panic. Okay, uh, locally the market went for a deep dive. Uh, and you also see this uh, similarly in the uh, Hong Kong tech sector. Stairs like Alibaba, Tencent has gone for deep dive because of all the bad news that's surrounding it. And then finally, they make a bottom, right? The price came down lower, lower, and lower highs. And then it was a substantial, substantial almost 50% downward move in uh, two, two weeks. And the price picked up a lot, right? So these are what you call selling climax. So finally, when they start rebounding on uh, certain good news, Right, they actually can come up, the price can come up without much of a, a volume because the, the most pessimistic of a seller has already sold off in the market. And you just need a little bit of buying volume to create the buy uh, sell pattern again and the, for the price to start moving higher, high, making higher, high, and higher low. Right, so these are patterns of uh, selling climax. Next, I want to talk of uh, something. Um, okay, sometimes after a selling climax, mm -hmm. you might actually see. Right, you might actually see that the uh, price make a retest of the recent uh, low, for example, like this. All right, so you have a lower low and lower high. All right, and then there was a substantial downward move, a signing climax. All right, then finally the volume was very high. Okay, volume, uh, the printed volume was very high right at the bottom. There was a rebound, and then the next move down, right, you see that the volume testing being tested uh, is uh, lower, much lower than the first one. All right, so this doesn't mean that. Uh, is bearish. It actually, that it does mean it's a good sign because um the most pessimistic of seller has already sold off. The next downward move, there's a seller has uh, dwindled. All right, the selling volume has dwindled, and finally, when the stock price will start rally again, now you see a pickup in volume. All right, so this is um a, another sign of a retest of a selling climax. All right, so now we'll look at some charts. Uh, let me orient you to uh, how you read the chart for those who are not very familiar and about charting. Right, this is actually a chart printed off uh, from our iTrade Pro platform. Now you look at the uh, bottom part, okay, those, this bottom part here, basically these are actually uh, volume, volume bars. All right, so as I say, every uh, volume bar, if it's green color, it, it means that on that day, the price actually rose, all right? The net shake was positive. On those days, like here, when you see a volume bar that's so high, it shows that this particular day, the price has came down and the volume actually is much higher than uh, most of the recent days. All right, so this is actually a very, uh, it's, a, it's a classic example of a very uh, healthy upward price trend. 
because on the days when it's going up, you look at this huh, on the left hand side, there are this arrow where the price is going up, right? You do see a increasing the in volume from the, from the height of the green color volume bar. You can actually see that the volume bars are picking up. So it shows that there's actually very strong accumulation. Now, on days when it was uh, going sideways, so sometimes, I mean, price don't usually move up in a straight line. So they do have correction for some people who take profit. Right, and then new buyers coming in who are stronger in holding power, they buy up the share, right? People contra, exchange hands, right? Roll over contra period. So, so these are, uh, if the selling, right, is uh, the correction is not too, sure, not too sharp, right? Uh, it's shallow. And the correction, even in better still, it goes in a sideways movement with a dwindling in volume. Look at the bottom part here, right? The volume actually shrunk compared to the volume uh, during the rally. The volume over here actually strong, okay, came down. So this is a very good sign. You have a, a, a rally on up on high volume, and then you have a correction down on retracement uh, or retracement or pullback on lower volume. So this is a very healthy sign of a, a uptrend. All right, so following that, if you can find, you can see that the, this price over here actually broke out of this range, all right? And the volume picked up substantially. Right, so, do, so this tells you that actually this price trend is a, a very healthy price trend. And the, uh, what we call the breakout pattern is, uh, is actually uh, valid. Uh, this particular breakout pattern here is actually valid. All right, so going, uh, going forward, moving along, you can see the price are going up. And also, okay, the price have been going up. At the same time, the green color ball has, bar, bars has been going up. Now this particular bar over here, right? There, it was a down day. And because of that, the uh, when because of the selling volume being, being so high, it forced the market into a sideways co consolidation. Okay, what we are seeing over here. All right. Now, what do we so what from what we have learned so far, right? What do we want to see during this consolidation? We want to see the volume to be shrinking, and this is exactly what the chart has done. All right, the volume to shrink during a, con a consolidation and a pullback, and a substantial pickup in volume just when the share price is breaking up to new highs. Right, so this is a very typical example uh, of a, a healthy price trend. In this case, uh, this particular share is called Venture, okay? Right. The okay, next, take a look at the price on a downtrend. Uh, look at this. This particular price is actually on a downtrend, okay, very sharp downtrend is uh, Singtel. Sometime, uh, I think, uh, I, I can't remember which period. But anyway, so the, Learning point to take away from here is that, firstly, we want the volume on down days to expand. That means if the share is coming down on lower, low and lower high and it's on the sustainable downtrend, usually you will see that on down days when the days were being sold off, the volume will expand, it means increase, right? On up days, uh, the, on the rally tend to be weaker and the volume to be uh, uh, lower. And in general, you'll see more downward move days than upward move days, okay? Right, so for, see for example here, there was a sharp sell off and true enough, you see a very sharp rise in the red color volume bar. Well, this tells you that actually the share is under a, a very strong uh, selling, okay? And then uh, you have actually a, uh, you know, if I can draw a support line here, right? So what happens here is that the price start to drop and the volume pick up substantially, right? So you, have, you, you see, moves like this, where the price start to consolidate, trying to make an upward move, but then it fell, and the price came down again, okay, on much heavier volume. It, it, show, it shows that the conviction and the, um, of the seller is much stronger than the buyers, and they are determined to sell off the share for whatever reason. It may be some bad news, uh, it may be some uh, macro uh, news or stock specific news that we, uh, we might want to check later. So if, even if you don't act on it, it's best to actually look out for uh, news flow, find out what is happening to the share and whether uh, you should uh, take advantage uh, to buy or like to, to stay out, away from it. But usually when I see a price breaking down from a support pattern and the volume pick up substantially, I will try to avoid the share, okay? Right, so you have a, we have a uh, sort of consolidation move here. Sorry, right, so this is a consolidation move here. And then there was a shrinking in volume, right? But later on, uh, when the price broke below, right, this support line, right, you can see that the price uh, came down and then the volume pick up again, right? Okay, all the volume pick up again. 
So these are uh, all these red lines, uh, all these red lines you see here, right? You can tell you can tell visually that they are much taller than any green line that you see recently, and they are very strong. Uh, or, I mean, the, it shows that you that the selling volume is really pretty strong and the selling momentum is pretty much on the downside. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's move on. So what's next is that uh, we want to uh, I'll give you an example. I want to give you an example of our, our selling climax. Now, now, what we have here is actually a uh, during the pandemic, all right, in the, uh, in the bottom of the pandemic, uh, March 2020, the market went for sell-off. Okay, in the accumulator in the uh, selling climax, you can see that the volume was uh, pretty much very, very heavy. All right, all these are very high, high selling volume, right? Then later on, there was try a, a short a short retest like here. Okay, the volume actually strong. Okay, now the 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 the, the volume behavior is still pretty much bearish because why I say that because uh, those days here where the sell off is, they're still very much uh, taller very much tall kind of uh, uh, red volume bars. But the pattern actually changed around here where the volume start to pick up substantially on a rally, right? So this particular day, I think might be some useful or what, right? That actually changed the whole uh, uh, makeup of the chart and turned the price around to, to make a higher, higher, higher move and uh, make an uptrend. Okay, right, so let's move on. All right, so this is a buying climax. This is what we see, right? The price went up for a very, uh, slow, slow rally, and then it was a sharp move. And then after that, there was a down, the, the bubble get deflated, and then it came off, right? So similarly, buying climax, you'll see very sharp kind of uh, a pickup in volume, right? But uh, after the pickup in volume, um, right? After the pickup in volume, uh, the sell-off actually came down on very much lower volume, right? And that, this particular bar here where the, uh, price came down on heavy volume. And this heavy volume, I'm talking about a volume that's not seen over the past four or five months or so. It shows you that the buying behavior or selling behavior has changed, the crop behavior has changed on the downside, and it's good to avoid the share, okay? All right, so what about breakouts? Okay, most importantly, um, breakouts, you want to see the price to expand a breakout, and then uh, we, more importantly, I want to emphasize is that uh, during breakout, it's good to see catalyst. That means news flow, whether be it positive earnings surprises, whether be it positive earnings upgrade, uh, management, management uh, upward guidance, things like that. So if you have a news flow, fundamental side supporting you on the breakout, then the breakout can be much more valid, all right? So let's take a look at some uh, price charts. All right, so this is actually a price. All right, so there was some consolidation and then was a breakout and you can see the volume also has a pretty, pretty much higher. Consolidation on lower volume and then breakout on higher volume. So I'm going to run through it uh, much quicker than the earlier because I think you get the hang of it. All right, so what we want to see is that on the upward move on breakouts, we want to have high volume. On pullback, we want to have shrinking volume. All right, and that will show you a price, a good price uptrend. All right, so here, uh, those bars that are circled, you can actually see that the volume pick up substantially. And then when the price go into a side wave move like this in the middle of the chart, right, the price actually, uh, the volume actually strong, right? Just prior to breakout, you can see strong accumulation here. And, and then the price woke up to much higher level around this point or much heavier volume. So this is another pattern of a very, um, you know, very uh, valid uh, uh, breakout. Uh, breakout on high volumes again, right? Same thing. All right, so I want to move on to something more important. Now, uh, this other thing is called the concept of relative strength. Now, uh, relative strength, I know that in technical analysis, there's another uh, indicator called relative, the relative strength indicator, but I'm not talking so much about that. I'm talking about comparing the stock price, uh, the strength of a stock price to the general market. Right, so you have a stock that is actually, uh, you know, uh, rallying, going up faster than the market and correcting less, it shows you that the stock has, is actually of a high uh, relative strength. So the strength of the stock is higher than the market. So we always measure, I, I use the uh, market index as a measure. So I measure the stock price movement against the market index to give me an idea which are the stock that's actually giving you higher relative strength. So for example, right? So this is uh, another uh, 
pattern of the sell-off during the March 2020, uh, the low of the pandemic, the market came from a sell-off. SCI fell from 3,200 points, 2,200 2, points, down 1,000 points, okay, during the March circuit breaker period. So let's compare this chart during this period against some of the stock that we see. Take, for example, IFAS. So what our platform can do, right, is that you can actually compare, you can actually plot two or more securities in the same price chart. And in the bottom window, I actually plotted the STI. So just now the chart that you see an STI, right, is superimposed on the bottom, right? So the, the, this particular uh, fell, uh, downward downtrend here is because of the pandemic. So similarly, IFAS went for a sell-off. It bought them around 70 cents, all right? And then what do we witness? We start seeing a uh, very interesting, right? High volume bars on the uptrend and then consolidation with lower volume. Okay, so you have up on high uh, volume, consolidation on low volume. These are actually positive pattern of a, a strong upward price movement. All right, and better still, okay, better still, the price actually recovered back to its original high pre-pandemic, I mean, just prior to the uh, uh, bad news over the circuit breaker lockdown and things like that, while the STR was still doing some sideways movement like here. All right, so it shows that this particular share, right, is actually of a very high relative strength and for whatever reason, and of course, uh, we, we know when we, if you do bother to follow the news flow of IFAS then, they were actually benefiting from it because uh, a lot of people were locked down, stay at home, people started to do online trading and the volume coming in, markets doing well, and then they start to, uh, the share price benefited a lot. And what has happened to the share then? All right, the share actually went, uh, this particular window that I, I, I boxed up here was what you saw just now. The price actually went from $1 to almost a $10 uh, peak. Uh, um, and it was it picked out in the, um, October last year. Okay, since then it's gone down on the, uh, a downward trend and trying to find its footing. Okay, another case. All right, AEM similarly during the sell off, right? It fell, and then when the market was doing a sideways movement during uh, April May uh, 2020, was still uh, doing during a circuit breaker lockdown. The price actually rallied back to its previous high just before the circuit breaker was announced. So that also tells you that it's a very high relative strength stock. And what has happened to it is that after that period, the price actually went for a very short uh, price rally. Okay, so this is what I mean by uh, concept of a uh, relative strength. And I think that uh, it's, um, it's a concept that I use a, a lot. And uh, with the iTrade, uh, if, you, if you can find uh, whether it's our platform, if you use you have other similar platform, you can actually try to plot a um, index meaning the general market itself, and make a comparison between the uh, price of the share and the, uh, and the index, all right? And a good case in point is that uh, uh, recently, so I always like to, what I like to do is that during a downtrend, right, when the market is uh, going through some certain sell-off, I want to screen the market to find for shares that are actually bucking the trend. Then I'll try to find out uh, about the stock, learn about more about stock if I don't already know about it. Uh, what kind of news flow is driving it? Uh, what uh, are the news for valid? Has the uh, market discounted the uh, the news itself, right? And then to um, to use it in my analysis. Now, uh, next, I want to demonstrate some of these ideas and uh, some of these lessons that I've uh, um, uh, shared with you uh, this morning using our platform iTrade Pro. Now, iTrade Pro, Pro is actually our proprietary trading platform. Um, it's used by all our remisers and traders. Um, and it's pretty powerful because I like it a lot because it's desktop based. Uh, you can have multi windows. You know, if you have dual screen like me, I'm having another window on my left. I can pull the uh, trading screen, charting screen on the side. So you have more real estate space. More, you have more real estate space to see. We have an overall view of your of the market. Now for clients, uh, you can actually um, contact your uh, reminds your trading representative to subscribe. Okay. Uh, I mean, basically the usage is free, so they don't, we don't charge you anything for it. Uh, it also allows you to assess multiple markets. So in the sense that we can do uh, like Hong Kong, uh, even to Jakarta, Malaysia, Shenzhen, uh, Shanghai, um, all the region markets, right? All this can be done through iTrade Pro, right? So it basically it's actually a charting as well as a trading platform. Um, of course, uh, those who are into technical analysis, uh, besides price and volume, you can also caught, uh, plot all the common and advanced uh, technical indicators like MACD, um, moving averages, stochastics, RSI, whatever. All right. And the other thing I want to share is called uh, trade alert. All right. This thing called trade alerts. 
uh, when you have a straight down, they will they will prop up uh, let to uh, let you so. So now I'm going to switch on to our platform and show you how it looks like. Okay, so this is uh, how the platform look like. All right, so I noticed that uh, because I was watching the um, webinar, I realized that the um, the screen that we are, the, the viewers are, you viewers are having are pretty small. Uh, what you can see is actually a um, fraction of uh, what of your screen space. So what I try to do is that I'm going to maximize my chart when I talk about a chart. But at this point in time, at the moment, I just want to orientate you to our platform. All right. So this is how I set up my window. You, know, you can do it many other ways if you like. All right. I have a watch list, my watch list here. Okay. And then I have a chart in the center. And on my right hand side, right, I can pull out things like uh, the first screen on the top is the window on the top. It's called market depth. So this is the market depth. Okay. Then I have the uh, time and sales. I also have the consolidated price. It means that it tells me that every price level, how, much, how many shares are printed. So whenever I press uh, select any of the stock, right, I can see that the, all the windows are populated. I can see at one look, uh, I don't need to be toggled so many screens to see um, how the price is reacting. What kind of buy sell volume are we seeing in the queue for this particular share? All right. So when I also want to, let's say, for example, I'm going to look at the DBS. Okay. Once I click on DBS, my chart will also show up the DBS price chart. All right, so, so you can actually move it around too. Like for example, I don't like my chart to be here. I can actually pull it off the screen to my other monitor. Okay, so these are things you can do, uh, wonderful things you can do with the uh, platform. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the uh, shortlisted share that I have. Uh. Um, uh, there are too many things that I like to share, but in, uh, in the interest of time, I think it's, I will just zoom in to certain ideas that I spotted recently during the sell-off. Because the whole learning point about today's uh, this morning uh, lesson is about um, relative strength, the concept of relative strength. So a lot of times when people, uh, you know, market go for sharp downturn, people start to be worried and then they're scared. And then you just, okay, I just want to switch on my terminal. I don't want to look at it, right? But that's not the point. I think the best opportunities are found during a market downturn, all right? Be it your value hunter or be it a momentum trader. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, Okay, um, I have a few stocks here. Now you know that, uh, you have to, I mean, I'm not just a technical, technical analysis guy. I also do use a lot of fundamental analysis and news driven kind of uh, uh, understanding of the markets uh, to decipher the, what the market is telling me, right? So uh, as you know, uh, with the invasion of Russia and Ukraine, the oil price has shot up. So definitely one of the thematic play, a very strong theme in the market is about oil, right? As oil price goes up, Right, uh, a lot of the oil and gas companies that we see, especially in the small and mid cap space, uh, they have rallied a lot. So, for example, uh, one particular oil exploration company is called Rex. Okay, so this is a chart of Rex. Let me see if you can see the chart well. I'm just uh, having another screen on my side to look at what you're looking. Okay, now, so this is the price of Rex, price chart of Rex. Okay, as usual, I plotted the uh, index at the bottom. Okay. And then this is the price of Rex uh, to show you how, how it looks like, okay? Right, so for example, you can see that uh, the market, uh, let it look, okay, at the bottom of the market went for a sell off and then there was a rebound. And then over here, right about maybe uh, here, okay, hang on, uh, I'll just close off this part. Yes. All right, so uh, market has sell off. There was a sharp rally in the index, right? STI, similarly, the uh, REX share price has also gone up. But interestingly, during this uh, sell off, okay, the final sell off when Russia started to invade Ukraine, okay, this uh, bigger sell off, the price, the uh, REX went for a very sh shallow dip, okay, with a lower, much lower volume. And then the price picked up again. Right, on high volume. So these are very valid. This is a breakout. This is a high volume breakout that we saw. So we learned that uh, you know, well, the pattern is a very positive pattern. The price actually went for uh, up on high uh, volume, down on lower volume, and then when it finally break out again, it was it came with very high volume. At the same time, it was it was actually happening uh, during a time when the market was going for a very sharp downtrend, like here. All right. So these are um, patterns you can look at as you scream through the market to look for shares that are actually bucking the trend. And they are usually bucking the trend for a reason, okay? So in this case, it was because of uh, uh, the uh, sharp uh, oil move uh, price in the uh, oil price. 
The other oil, uh, oil and gas play is called uh, Irish Petrol Gas. This is even more explosive. If you look at the recent uh, market sell-off, I will just zoom in to this particular area. Okay, this particular, sorry, maybe too narrow. Okay, right. So I'm just going to zoom in to uh, this particular point in time here. All right, so this particular section here. Okay, during the time when the market sell off. All right, you'll notice that during the market, so when the market was going up like here, okay, the price also rallied, high volume. Do you see the volume over here? As it's consolidated, the volume start to string. And you notice that many of these red color volume bars are, is much shorter than the green ones. So it so shows that on days when the market was set, or the, the price was setting off, the sellers are much lesser, all right? And the, when the days when the buyers are coming in like here, the volume actually expanded. So it shows that this is a very very uh, healthy kind of price movement. And finally, when the market start to uh, fall, like here, there was a very sharp downward move in the STI index. Interestingly, the price start to break up on very heavy volume, right? So we see very strange uh, behavior like this, right? You will have to sit up and take a look and investigate and learn what is happening. So because of oil price, uh, sharp oil price rally in the brand could uh, and the supply squeeze, right? So market um, is buying to oil and gas share. And if you look at, if you compare to uh, stocks in the US and other places, if you do a similar screen, you can see that oil and gas companies also rallying. It tells you the whole group is actually rallying as a whole. It gives you even more confidence in the analysis. All right. So now here you will see a very sharp uh, rally in the, oil, uh, the, the price of share, the price book up of this consolidation band and went for a very sharp rally. So this is the band here. And then it finally broke on high volume. The price, the, the, the Irish petrol gas actually went on to uh, rally from 21 cents to almost 43 cents in a week. So these are very explosive moves because they are small and mid caps uh, that we are talking about. Okay. Right. So, uh, and what are the thematic plays we can identify at the moment in the market? So, for example, we can look at, uh, we are talking about inflation, right? You go to the supermarket, you go to your Kopitiam, the Kaya Toast also has an uh, increase in price. So this is what, uh, and a lot of this uh, inflation actually feeding into the commodities. So one particular commodity that is a uh, very common, common commodity is uh, palm oil, right? So we look at, we zoom into first resources uh, um, share price, right? As you can see also a very uh, similar behavior. For example, here, okay? The price, uh, similarly, SDI has gone down, all right? The price was starting to rally here just even before and during when uh, STL was peaking. And then when the share price corrected down here, the volume strung a lot. And just when the market going to sell off like here, the volume start to expand. Can you see all these green color volume bar? They are much taller than what we saw uh, recently and the price to, uh, start to rally. All right. So, once you start looking out for certain kind of strange behavior like this, uh, you get a hang. Somehow the market is telling you a story that, hey, um, you know, buyers are coming in very strongly. And then because of this uh, theme about uh, palm uh, inflation, palm oil, all that, the whole sector is going for a rally. So even during a down market, you, you are alert enough and you do a bit of screening, you can actually tell some of these pattern behaviors that we, uh, we spotted, okay? Um, what else do you think we have? Ah, okay, look at, let's look at Samudera. All right, so this is Samudera. So we also have a uh, supply chain squeeze, right? You notice that because of a pandemic, some of the ports are, are congested, congested, no workers are, are mending the ports. And then because of the supply chain and the, uh, and the war and things mm -hmm. like that, the uh, shipping cost has gone up a lot. So it actually benefited companies like Samudera. So look at it at the, from point of view. Huh? All right, so if you zoom out, um, I will expand the chart even more. I think uh, it might be better to the better view. Okay, yeah, okay, better. So you see, now the script is the same, right? The market sell off during the wall, all right? And then the volume start to pick up. Okay, in Samudera, right? And of course, uh, this particular bar here came in very strong news flow because uh, Samudera just reported strong earnings. 
and then the price gap up from here to here, from gap up from here to here, and the market start to rally. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so definitely uh, with a bit of news flow, if you uh, understand the news, right, and uh, where to uh, look for it, it definitely help you a lot. Okay, uh, in this case for someone I want to highlight a tool that our platform has. Uh, this is, you can, it's a trend line, but this is a special trend line, okay? So it's not just a trend line, it's a trend line with alert. All right, how you plot it is that you're going to select from here, a trend line with a resistance or trend line with a support alert. Okay, and th uh, with this, right, basically once you draw the line, and if the price do hit, and say for example, the price has gone up like here, and you draw a line here, right? Or even here, I draw a support line and the price up here. Now in the event that the price come back and hit this line, you get alert on the platform to tell you, hey, the, the support line that you drawn uh, has a trigger alert, and then you might want to take action about it. So it's very good for very active traders uh, where you are looking for monitoring for some price level or trend levels and you want to be alerted. You don't want to be looking at it full time. Okay, so you can actually draw those lines and leave it there and the, the, the platform will monitor for you. Once the alert was hit, uh, or it's hit, it will give you a, uh, you can actually even modify the notification. It give you a pop-up uh, alert as well as a uh, sound alert, right? So this is Samudera for you, and uh, it has gone up to, uh, and I, okay, so if you, if I may, uh, right, I'll run through this again. All right, so we have here, the price was moving up nicely here, very shallowly, and on a little bit of, uh, uh, the volume was picking up, right? Although the price didn't make a substantial move, but strangely on the day when the market sell off, the market, the, the share price did not drop at all. And finally, the, the next day, the news came out that the Samudera actually uh, enjoyed strong earnings growth and the market uh, and the price uh, popped up on very heavy volume. And then it went on to a sharp rally. Now, after that, of course, uh, after a rally, you might see uh, cases like this where the price going to consolidation, which is a very common uh, behavior. But during converse, com uh, I mean, during a consolidation, right? What we have learned so far is that we want the volume to shrink, okay? The trading volume to shrink. And what I mean by shrinking, we are shrink, when we mean, what we mean by shrinking is something like this, okay? This volume behavior here, right? Can you see that this particular volume here, bar here, compared to the uh, more recent bar on the left-hand side, they're much lower, okay? And on top of that, on days where the market sell off, like here, what is the red color bars? Even better still here. Okay, the selling volume actually strong a lot. So it tells you that the sellers are not in control. In fact, the buyers are, 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 are still pretty strong. And you can notice it by looking at the uh, green volume bar. So with a visual comparison during, during a price consolidation, if we visually compare the red and green volume bars, right? If you notice the green volume of bars are usually much taller, and the rate volume bars are actually much shorter. It shows you that actually the sort of consolidation is a pretty uh, healthy one. And the probability of the share price con can continuing on its uptrend, breaking up the new high is much higher, all right? So similarly over here, finally after uh, three weeks of consolidation, the price move up, all right? Here, broke up again. This particular uh, level broke up again on very heavy volume. And then the market went on to a rally from uh, almost 78 cents to 96 and a half cents. All right. So, um, yeah, so this is a um, something to look out for. And uh, I think you more or less get a hang of it as I repeat the same um, um, what we have discussed so far. Another uh, case in point is, uh, is uh, Riverstone. Okay, let's take a look at Riverstone. Okay, sorry. Okay, here we go. Right, so another case in point is uh, Riverstone. You look at Riverstone chart, okay, or thump here. All right. Okay, so Riverstone uh, have, uh, as you know, Riverstone is actually uh, into glove making. 
All right. And uh, they have a very good run in 2020. But uh, after that, right, you can see the share price. It was a big uh, blow off here. And after the price has been going down on a downtrend. So I will say every dog has his day. Finally, Riverstone make a um, bottom here. And we zoom into the recent past. Huh? We look at the volume start to be very constructive uh, as, the price, as the market was starting off. So same thing. We have the um, STI index plotted on the bottom, in the bottom window, like here. It was a sell-off during the U Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine. But strangely, on this day, on this particular day when the market was signing off, I noticed that Riverstone is actually trying to make a new high. Okay, so you see, it broke up on high volume, right? And then it was, uh, you know, as usual, was showing. In fact, it's very easy to spot because uh, all many shares are turning red, but Riverstone is turning green, and especially it's gone up for quite a big percentage. And prior to that, we actually can see that there was a strong and healthy accumulation in volume, up on high volume, down on the consolidation on lower volume. And then the price picked up again here on higher volume. All right, so this is a, a, yet, yet again another uh, pattern of what we want to see in a healthy price trend. So as the price continue, uh, SDI continue to drop, we also see that the price, uh, we will still go into the consolidation move, all right? And then it, uh, and the body also has strong. Okay, after that, uh, the price start to rally again. All right, and the volume has picked up like here. All this green volume bar has start, it has start, pick up substantially. Uh, but if you look at the news flow, what has happened is that uh, Ripple Store actually announced uh, pretty good results. And then they also has a, a very huge, uh, uh, big percentage. May or call it, they are giving a very big, uh, large uh, special dividend. Right. So if you ask, I mean, the people are asking me, hey, okay, now we are talking about news flow and uh, things like that, right? So where do we actually find all this news? How do we actually... Uh, look out for news like this, all right? So normally what I do is that if I notice some strange price movement, okay, I will try to check on the stock exchange website or try to Google for it. So actually it helps a lot. In fact, uh, I do follow our house research a lot. So every morning uh, we will have a news update on the markets as well as stocks. And these are actually available to, to clients. So do, do contact your uh, trader representative or, or the company to, to get hold of the research or how you can access that. Uh, now, on the stock exchange website, right, so uh, what I want to share with you that how can you actually look up for certain research material or rather certain uh, news flow that I, I've been explaining so far. You come to the stock exchange website, okay, so this is XGX. Um, one place I like to look at, I mean, one place you can actually find ideas is that you look at the price, okay, you look at the uh, top volume, top value, top advance and top decliners. All these are actually places where you can find strange uh, price pattern behavior, all right? So this is where you can actually look out you know, what stocks are doing well and what are stocks in team. And the other uh, uh, area is company announcement, right? So you go to company announcement, you will see the uh, announcement being you know, issued by the company uh, during the past uh, 24 hours. I mean, uh, since the close of the last trading day, all right? And then uh, you can sort. What I like to um, filter a lot and look out for a lot is what you call disclosure of interest and changes in shareholdings. Okay, so you select that. Okay, this is what, what it means is that this are actually um, uh, records of uh, insiders buy sell trades. So any uh, company executive uh, or any controlling shareholder who owns more than 5% share in the company, uh, whatever you do, whether you're buying or selling, they need to declare. All right, so usually these are the points where places we can look for interesting ideas, who is buying, what share, especially if you have a notable fund manager, like maybe your Aberdeen or the Templeton or some very famous um, funds uh, or, or uh, well-performing funds buying the share. I would like to look out for it and then try to look in the stock and see what kind of behavior I can uh, get out of it. Right, so um, we, I think we have about 10 minutes. Uh, maybe we can take some actions um, from here, right. So, um, okay, this is our platform. Maybe, uh, what I, okay, let me share with you again, uh, sorry. I uh, cut myself short. Now, uh, so this is iTrade Pro platform. I don't have all the time to share with you all the tools and uh, things you can use on the platform, but I can show you some screen capture of what is available. Now, this is a, uh, a screen capture of the platform. What you see on the left-hand side here is what you call a ladder, order ladder, right? Or order injector, you call it. 
So basically for active traders, right? You don't want to be pinning your account number, how many shares you want to buy, price and things like that all the time. So you are very actively trading. You can actually ask to, um, to activate this order injector. And you just start, you can put default. Every time I click, I'm going to buy 1,000 share or 2,000 share of the burger share, right? And you, once you click, the order is done, right? You can actually um, turn off the notification to confirm and then the order will be sent through. So for very, very active traders, uh, it's useful. But however, I'm going to warn you, it's very uh, dangerous, right? So if you click the wrong button, you might just, you know, the order will send through anyway. Uh, other things you can do on the platform like this, all right? So you have a lot of shares to monitor and you want to monitor it in intraday, day, you can put it on the screen like this and then you pull it off into your dual screen. Right, you can actually order at one glance. You know what are the shares and uh, how the shares be performing in Friday for a chart. So you, uh, this is especially good for you if you are actually a, a very um active trader. And this is another screen capture that we what we can do for the platform. All right, so uh, maybe I'll just look at some of the questions that you might have. Okay, uh. Somebody asked, uh, for explosive string of price action, what are the best uh, indicators to use? Okay, uh, personally, I explore with a lot of indicators, but I find that at uh, the end of the day, the, the sim simplicity is the best, right? So I use a lot of price and volume because these are actually, actually the raw data that goes into the derivative of all the other technical indicators. Right. Besides that, I use a bit of uh, MACD and the stochastic. Okay. But price volume definitely will actually help in identify certain explosive move. Um, okay, the top question here, signal volume is relative low in the region. I believe some sectors might not work with the price action such as REITs. Is there a particular sector more favorable? Ah, okay, very good, Alex Wu. Right, I totally agree with you, right? If you plot this, if you use the price action that I've described so far to, uh, to plot some of your very, very big cap share, right? You may not see very explosive move very common, uh, very, very often, right? So usually the, the volume traded is always uh, consistently high or consistently certain amount. So you don't see a very sharp move in the volume uh, pattern at all. But the principle that I shared so far about, you know, rallies being on high volume or correction on low volume for healthy trend to be around, right? It's still very valid, right? So for reads and all that, I don't use this, uh, price volume action too much. Uh, I do look more for like uh, a thematic play, la, right? Whether the interest rate is going up or going down and whether um, the environment, macro environment is suitable for risk and whether the risk has any um, uh, room for leverage and whether they have any uh, upcoming uh, asset enhancement uh, exercise. Okay, uh, somebody asked, uh, the volume data that we see on the trading platform are based on broker's order book or are they from the exchange itself? Actually, the, uh, like I mentioned in the first slide, all the volume I'm talking about is actually the traded volume, right? So it's not from a broker book. So uh, unlike other foreign jurisdictions for Singapore-wise, um, we have only one exchange, all right? So when you plot the chart using the traded volume, you're actually taking the feed from the stock exchange. So whether you are trading through CIMB, CGS, CIMB, Kimming, or any other brokers, all the brokers, the, the, the chart that you plot, right, will have, you have the same chart because all the volume is traded, taken universally from exchange. Somebody asked, uh, for bullish divergence, is there any significant difference between MACD divergence and RSI divergence? Um, okay, a bit of background, MACD is actually derived using a, uh, two, uh, a pair of uh, moving averages. Whereas RSI is comparing the um, recent strength of a price, right? So let's say you put an RSI for seven, seven day period RSI, it's basically comparing the share uh, movement, the price movement against the seven day, within a seven day window. So it's very much short term, depending on what kind of parameters you plug into the technical indicators. But I would say that um, both are actually uh, useful if you're talking about divergence. But more importantly, uh, we, what, we have what you call, um, a concept called confluence of technical indicators. So be it, let's say, for example, you have a few indicators that you like, but I also suggest that you keep it uh, short and simple, maybe limited to two, two and most three, right? And if the three indicators or two indicators tell the same thing, you know, giving you a bullish or bearish divergence, it should sort of confirm that uh, this, uh, con this um, signal they picked up, right, is pretty probably quite reliable and you actually can act on it.
right? Of course, then you put in your price volume analysis, you have a better understanding of how the market might perform, all right? <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for the compliment, Gordon. Gordon is asking me with a 30 years of experience, do you intend to create a YouTube channel to share your views? This is my dream when I retire, all right? I like to be sipping cocktail in Bali and do a YouTube channel, joking. But uh, I'm still very passionate about this job. I really like the environment, the colleagues I have, the friends I make in this industry. And I do want to uh, um, go do more teaching to share my view uh, with a participant like yourself. Uh, okay, how do you determine or confirm if it's not a counter trend move? Very good question, right? Now, uh, we see in the market now, there has been a, almost like a rally. It's like good times are bad. Now, so after the sell-off in, uh, in the Russia and Ukraine, after the bad news over the uh, January, the fact uh, interest rate high, market went into sell-off, and then it has returned. Okay, market has rallied back again. Now, is this a continuing of uptrend, a rally to new highs, or is it a counter-trend move? Right. So well, you when I I also work with a lot of moving averages. So in this uh, particular session, I'll just share with the price and volume after removing all the moving averages and MACD indicators, indicators that I have. So if you notice that the, I, I think for simplicity's sake, sake, right, without going too much in the moving averages and uh, MACD, things like that. More importantly, if you uh, notice the share price is going up a high volume, we trace on low volume, and then you make a series of high, 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 low. You don't see prices breaking support. That, by itself, right, we take it as a uptrend. But uh, some of the shares are, are having an uptrend move, rebounding a lot off, off the bottom, right? But they are coming on very low volume. Um, I don't have the time to show you. Um, if they can pick up, like, take for example, some, some of these shares, uh, they are coming up on rallying on very low volume. It shows that the trend may, the trend may not be sustainable. All right, so if it comes back to uh, previous resistance or uh, support and resistances, maybe it's good to take profit, manage your risk. So it's never a 100% game. It's always about uh, weighing your risk, how you manage your risk, right? Do you want to take some partial profit to protect your, uh, your portfolio and things like that? Okay, right. Um, okay. Um, can one from price action be volume or in the case tell? Uh, oh, so basically this question is about whether we can tell from price volume action, right? Uh, prior to some result earnings release, whether the price is going to go up or go down. Now, um, hmm, okay. Of course, we will never know how the results turn out, right? But uh, it's about uh, taking a measured risk. Uh, so if you think that the, the company has been reporting quarterly and have given you very consistent earnings surprises and the company has been guiding, guiding very consistently correct, maybe the, uh, the price volume move may be valid and then you just manage to breach accordingly, okay? So I got 30, 40 seconds left. Uh, I think I will leave it as that and leave a bit of time for preparation for the next speaker. Thanks so much for uh, attending the uh, talk, right? Edward, to you. Thank you so much, Sengfu. Wow, that was really educational. So Thank for you. those of you who watched that session, I'm sure you got so much out of it. I most certainly did. And if you missed out part of that session, you're like, oh no, I, I, I missed out on all this. I'm telling you folks, some of the information and some of the things that Sengfu is sharing with you, people charge lots and lots of money for, and he shared it with you absolutely free. This session is also available it is recorded. It will be available next week. If you missed out any of it, you can watch it again. If you have already watched it, you might want to watch it one more time. So just to remind you, it will be available on this website next week. Also, a quick update for all our viewers. There are exhibitors in our exhibition hall. Do check them out after this next session. We've got promotions for each of the brokers. There's even live chat available where their staff are ready to chat with you in case you have any questions.